Okay, this is a continuation of the STEM podcast for chapter 2.1. Um, we're going to look at atomic mass. If you look at the three particles that are inside of an atom, proton, electron, and neutron, this is the corresponding masses. Um, if you look, they're in scientific notation, and notice the negative numbers here. Okay, so what subatomic particle weighs the least? The one that has the most negative would be weighing the least, so an electron weighs the least, which makes sense because in our podcast first part, we just stated that the nucleus has most of the mass, which is the protons and neutrons. All right, a term you need to know is atomic number. The atomic number of the element is equal to the number of protons that the element has. Elements, if you look on the periodic table, are numbered, one through, you know, so many, and that number also corresponds to the number of protons or atomic number. The number is the same for every like atom. So, all carbon atoms have six protons, so the atomic number of carbon is six. There's your answer right there. And how many protons does oxygen have? So what you do is you go to the periodic table, you find oxygen, because you know its symbol, look at oxygen, and it's number eight, which means it has eight protons. The answer is right there. Okay, another term is mass number. It's also called the atomic mass number. So here's a picture of carbon, and we're saying it is carbon 12. That 12 refers to the mass number. The mass number is equal to the number of protons plus neutrons. So if there's six protons and there's six neutrons, the mass number is going to be 12. The mass number is always going to be a whole number. And it allows us to give an equation to calculate the number of neutrons. The number of neutrons equals the mass number minus the atomic number. All right, how do I find out the number of electrons that an atom has? Well, the number of electrons is equal to the number of protons in a neutral atom. The number of electrons can change, like during a chemical reaction, but it doesn't change the properties of the atom. It'll still be carbon, for example. If an atom loses or gains an electron, there is a specific term for that. We'll get into that later. Um, but in general, it is called an ion. So an ion is an atom that has gained an electron or lost an electron. All right, so we have four summary equations that you should know. First one, number of protons equals the atomic number. Number of neutrons equals mass number minus atomic number. And number of electrons equals atomic number, unless it's an ion. So you definitely need to know how to calculate number of protons, neutrons, or electrons. The other equation, which is just this one flipped around, is that um, the atomic mass Oh, it's not that one, it's the atomic mass, sorry, it is the number of protons plus the number of neutrons. Okay, the other topic we're going to talk about in this section is, for the part B, is isotopes. And isotopes are atoms that, have, that are the same element, but they have a different number of neutrons. So as long as the proton number is the same, it's still carbon, but if it has a different number of neutrons, it is an isotope. For example, this is carbon-12. The mass number, and we say carbon 12, that's how we would read that. Um, the mass number is on the top, and the bottom refers to the atomic number, which also gives us the number of protons. Here are an example of an isotope. Carbon 12 is here. It has six protons always. See, carbon 14 always has six protons, because if it didn't, it wouldn't be carbon. Um, number of neutrons is six because it's carbon-12, so you would subtract that to figure out the number of neutrons. The electrons are the same as the protons because this is a neutral atom. But notice in carbon-14, we have six protons, but it's carbon-14. Subtract that, then it's notice that the number of neutrons is different, and that's why it's defined as an isotope. Electrons equal the protons also in this case because it is a neutral atom. Okay, the last thing we're going to do about isotopes is called the average atomic mass. It is reported, actually, on the periodic table. And basically, it's the weighted average of all the isotopes that there are. So to calculate that, here's this equation. The average atomic mass is you would take the atomic mass of all the isotopes and basically divide it by the total number of atoms. To get the um, atomic mass, you take the mass number and multiply it by how many atoms you have of that um, mass number. Add them all up and divide by the total. So let's do an example. There are eight, there are ten chlorine atoms. 
Eight of them are chlorine 35, and two of them are chlorine 37. So this is how you would plug these numbers into that equation. Okay? You would take your mass number, which is 35, and you have eight of them. Multiply that together, and then add it to mass number 37, and you have two of them. So 35 times 8 plus 37 times 2, divided by the total number, which is 10. Multiply and divide all that out, and you get, you should get 35.4 grams. Um, before we go on to part 3, I do want to show you the periodic table. You will be getting a copy of this in class. Notice that there are group numbers up at the top. We'll define this in a minute. And you also have um, periods down here. Notice the coloring. It's all color-coded. Um, all the yellow portion of the periodic table here shown is metals. The purple portion are the non-metals, and the green portion are the metalloids. Um, going down in purple are called groups, and going across are called periods. And they're numbered from 1 to 7, for example, right here. You can kind of see that. Um, there are trends on the periodic table. The group number, which are these numbers here, are giving you the number of valence electrons, which we'll define in the third part. These groups have similar reactivity. So for example, this red group right here um, all react the same way, which actually they don't react at all. They're the noble gases. The period number, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, are, give you the number of energy levels that that atom has. Okay. And that ends our second section.